Hey guys, Dazzler Magic here with your Friday Magic News Update. We've got some small stories that you might care about. First up, they've announced that the official Mastery Pass on Arena will be based on Foundations. Now what is Foundations? It's basically a core set with a bunch of easy to understand staple cards of typically low power, and they're going to be in standard constructed until 2029 regardless of any kind of rotation. So I guess one theory was an approachable set that people can actually learn magic on, but the second they see standard constructed, they're out. They're going to go play a different game. It's so complex, so expensive, so stupidly short and just control heavy. It's a joke. But good try, Watsy. Maybe somebody will draft it or build a cube out of it. I don't know. Really, it's just to get um, weak boring cards that they need to be in the standard environment because you just need so many counter spells and kill spells and whatever and like take them out of sets where they don't belong like this doesn't really fit here we want to put in a more interesting card but we need this to exist so we're throwing it in here so it's supposed to prevent that while also just having absolute staples that they don't have to worry about oh it's rotating out now we have to put it in exactly this set at this time especially the first po post rotation set so, their article says, visit the reward distribution and drop rate information article, what, to learn more about the set mastery and other rewards. And if you click on it, you get access denied. You don't have permission to access stage.magic.wizards.com slash English slash MTG arena slash drop rates. So I guess we don't get to find out about the drop rates. Um, I assume that they referenced that because they made it worse and sparing actually seeing it. That's what I'm going to continue to assume. If you've been playing Arena for the full six plus years, you probably have all these staple cards already, unless they're going to do something really wacky with foundations. In my opinion, because they can't stop themselves from doing this, they're going to put in some crazy unique power cards and foundations just to sell the damn set. This will not be a take it or leave it whatever, and in fact, this is the last standard set to come out until quarter one 2025, so this like is the fall slash Christmas big standard set full of boring mundane cards that nobody wants or needs. I don't think they're going to leave it at that. I think they're going to do something else with it, and not just like a bonus sheet and special trims and serialized crap and all that. I think they're going past that. We'll see. We don't have a full list of spoilers yet. We have next to no spoilers on it, actually. And I'm not even sure when the spoilers start. I thought it was today, actually. I don't care. The Hasbro Quarterlies came out yesterday. I got to make that video. I'm way more interested in that. And if you are too, subscribe because we're going to cover it. Next up, we've got additional details being released later today, shortly after 1 p.m. Pacific time, actually, at the uh, MagicCon Vegas, about, well, obviously, Foundations, uh, but the further spoilers are next week, I believe, and then the Magic Final Fantasy crossover product thing, whatever, another universe is beyond thing. Everyone's like, ooh, Final Fantasy, oh my gosh, woo, and it's going to feature uh, Kefka Palazzo. I have no idea who that is. I've actually never played any of the Final Fantasy games. I don't know how I managed to dodge that, considering I love RPGs. I think they were just always too expensive or on a console that we didn't own or whatever. Technically, I did play the demo on PC of 7 for like 10 minutes, and it had some graphical issues because our computer wasn't powerful enough. So I'll probably cover that in a separate video because it's Final Fantasy, and that's cool. If it was just another stupid Walking Dead or... Star Wars or something, who cares? Um, I probably wouldn't even bother. Next up, speaking of the schedule, I guess I could cover this. This isn't really news, but I'm sure you're probably wondering. We've got January 2025, Innistrad Remastered. Just another combined reprint set of all the different Innistrads. It's best of, but who cares? I'd rather just get a true master set and get it over with instead of having to lock it into just these. But there's some power cards in there. We'll see some cards go down in price. So that's cool. If you can completely ignore the product and then benefit from it because uh, the cards that just got reprinted in it lowered the price of the cards that you want to buy for your commander deck, that is a big positive. So after that, it's sometime in quarter one, 2025, we have Multiplanar Race, which is exactly what it sounds like. That's not just a um, nickname. It's just going to be a big race set up probably between the different... Um, Whatever they call it, planar gates or whatever. I keep forgetting what they call it. Something scars or something. I don't know. And I'm sure that ties into the mechanics. Um, so that'll be cool. Uh, I believe they also announced that they're done making top-down sets. They're going to do bottom-up sets and then just kind of make it work. So they had some mechanics that looked like they'd be kind of cool for a race. And then they inserted a race into it instead of, hey, we want to do a Western set. Now let's start at the top and work down and make it kind of work. And then it doesn't. 
Uh, I believe they had mentioned that, but I, I didn't get official confirmation. I think it was just on Mark Rosewater's blog or something like that. So interesting. I mean, that'll help set design just in time for standard to already be dead two years ago, but okay, whatever. Then we've got Return to Tarkir in quarter two of 2025. So we're, we're going back to Tarkir for some reason again. Uh, I don't think anybody really cared about that. It's just like discount Dominaria with less going on and then some confusing time travel where you think you know what happened, but then time travel erased it all. So I hope you didn't buy and read the books. Yeah, they should have maybe just let Tarkir be its thing, and then people really, really don't like three-color sets. They're impossible to draft, and they don't work. And they do very bad things to the power level of standard, because they keep acting like it's such a trade-off to have three-color. You've got three-color on turn three 90% of the time on Arena. Okay, there's too much fixing, there's too many cards legal with the extra year. It's just not a thing. So it's it's really going to do bad things to the meta, which is already in complete and utter shambles, in case you forgot. Uh, so after that, in uh, quarter three, we've got Space Opera, which we already have some art for. It is actually in space, so that'll be weird. Then we've got Return to Lorwyn. It's about damn time, but that's quarter four, 2025. We'll see if they even have a company after that. We'll see if we even have a country at that point. We'll see if we have a functioning economy at that point. Uh, then sometime in 2025, we'll have the Final Fantasy set that we're about to hear about. And then uh, sometime in 2025, we'll have the Marvel product, which has now been revealed to be Spider-Man. I don't remember if it's like a Lord of the Rings thing or like what the legality is, if it'll be standard legal or not. Um, no idea. I think they're intending to make it standard legal. Then we've got Return to Archivos in quarter one of 2026. Of course, that is uh, Harry Potterville. It's the Strixhaven Magic School. So that's the official schedule coming up. Um, I can't wait to see the reveal of the details on the multiplanar race. I almost expected that today, but I haven't heard a peep about it. So either they're going to ambush us with it or... Uh, it's not done yet, or they don't think we need to know about it yet before Christmas. Uh, when it comes out after Christmas, there is some like business logic there. Uh, next, a uh, big news story. We got the Commander Format Panel, which is supposed to make you feel better about Watsy running the Commander uh, ban list. So you know I got the, the, the Committee of Popper People or whatever, the CCP, and uh, they actually know what's going on on the ground and in the community with popper and so they formed a panel with i think gavin verhe and uh they make decisions about what should be banned and you know that kind of stuff and they've done a lot of good for the format they decided to take that goodwill and that template and apply it to commanders so now they have the commander format panel so uh, he says keeping the community front and center here is critical so we wanted to assemble a group uh, of the community to manage the commander format panel or cfp I've already been warned that one of the, at least one of the members, I should say, is a complete and utter degenerate pervert freak. So uh, that's great. Great way to start off there. So with the Protean Hulk thing and some early trading and some leaking of information and basically like insider trading that would benefit uh, people if they got rid of or acquired cards at the right time, uh, accusations and basically proof of it with the old commander committee and advisement group or whatever, which was like two different things, I guess, whatever, they're both gone, so who cares? People are like, well, okay, good riddance. We don't want Watsy to run it, but those people are crooked as hell. Very self-serving. Back in the day, way back in the day, they would just unban cards that they had decks that they personally liked, and it was a joke. But if you start with adding people to the committee that live incredibly immoral, deranged, mentally unstable lifestyles, they tend to do self-serving shit that pisses people off and not make, like altruistic decisions for lack of a better term so i'm sure this will be a complete and utter shit show and then remember watsi has final veto on whatever they say so this is going to be drama accusations and getting nothing done while also never banning anything printed in last year no matter how bad it is can't wait to see that so they've got paragraphs and paragraphs of introducing it. And here's the history and the mission of the commander format panel. Nobody cares. It's all bullshit. It's going to be a bunch of lefty morons. And how do you represent casual, low power level? Like this is acceptable. In my play group versus competitive. And we all know that everybody at Watsi only rubs elbows with like the competitive people at all the tournaments. So they're out of touch on, on anything involving like fun and enjoyable gameplay. And they're probably just going to try to balance it the way they always do with numbers, which does not work for the commander format. That's really all you need to know. You don't need to read any of this crap because it's all not true.
I will say that this is a very big panel. We've got Attack on Cardboard. I guess we're not using real names. There's 17 members. We've got Bandit MTG1, Benjamin Wheeler, Charlotte Sable. I think that's the one people had issues with. I don't remember. Dequan Watson, Deco, whoever that is, uh, Greg Sablon, it, it Tattoo? IT Tattoo? I don't know who that is. Josh Lee Kwai, because of course, he, he will literally do anything to get any amount of attention. Kristen Gregory, Lua Stardust. Oh, maybe that's the one they had issue with. That sounds like a stripper name in my chat during the live stream told me that uh, they let some kind of mentally deranged lefty stripper on the committee. Just based on Googling her name, I think that might be the one right there. That That just might be her. I don't know. Maybe they weren't even telling the truth, didn't have time to vet it. I really don't want to look up the entire life history of 17 people that I don't give one single shit about. We've got Olivia Gobert Hicks, Rachel Weeks, Rebel Lily? What? Rebel with an extra L. What? What? I swear to God. People are naming their kid Jackson with an X. Why am I even surprised? Scott Larrabee, Tim Willoughby, and Toby Elliott. So they just got so many people in there that nobody would ever possibly agree on anything. I'm sure they represent casual to competitive. I mean, they probably got them in a little bit, but this is completely symbolic. It's to make people happy, and it's it's nothing. They're probably going to send them a little, like, survey and then just do whatever decision they think will make them the most money and then be wrong about it. That's my prediction. Maybe they should have added me to the committee if you're just adding people that you think will bring in a certain crowd and represent, like, well, the conservative, low-powered players who know how to do math and know how to balance the game. Uh, I don't see anybody like that on here, but for the record, I don't know 99% of these people. I'm pretty sure they just got most of the cast of, of a bunch of, like, Commander podcasts, all of which are complete shit, and totally don't bot their views. They're all 100% legitimate views, guys. I assure you... What an absolute joke. Also, if you somehow managed to miss it, they made an out-of-cycle emergency ban announcement for Leyline of Resonance, which I never thought would happen ever. Oh, there's a big announcement about a uh, really cool side product that looks really nice, but I'm not going to say a damn word about it because they absolutely offered and agreed to uh, sponsor my channel uh, so that I would promote these products and then backed out and totally ghosted me. So, um, actually... Fuck you. I'm going to get you absolutely no sales. That's what you get, assholes. And I thought the product was cool as shit. So, uh, oh, well. So uh, as far as the most important news on Arena and with the standard uh, post-ban meta, uh, I've been testing out a little bit uh, with a couple of my decks. A normal, like, high-powered mid-speed deck still absolutely gets thrashed. I'm winning, like, 30% of the time with, like, a uh, mono green splash black search deck that just goes up, casts some crazy shit for five or six. Just get stomped. I mean, there's certain decks that can beat. It plays around control a little bit, but Blitz is too fast and Control is too annoying so to really play anything mid-range or anything that's not absolute peak power. So I built it knowing it wouldn't win, but I wanted to have like a baseline and I needed to complete some like green achievements. So Ramp and Stomp uh, does not work. Uh, my white deck is just murdering people left and right. I have two versions of it, the highly competitive top of the league one and the lower, more like balanced, I have a little bit of mid-range secondary options deck. And uh, they're both appropriate for when you use them when you should. However, everybody's still running Obnoxious Red Rush just without Leyline. It's still annoying. It's still turn 3-4, but uh, so is my deck. Um, so you got two people causing that problem. And then you've got black. You don't even get to play your deck. And everybody running Red Rush just skip to that bullshit. So get ready to see Bat on turn one for 100% of the games for the next three years. Thanks, Watsy. So that's it for the Magic News for now. But watch for even more coverage when we get some more infor uh, information coming out of Vegas. Thanks for watching, everybody. And I'll see you next time.